Well, in Dallas, you could be catching a ride without a driver by next year. That's according to California-based rideshare company. It's called Cruise. Now, their fleet of self-driving cars will be ready to pick up riders by early 2024. Did you hear what I said? Self-driving cars. Yeah, the company rolled out nearly 400 vehicles in Austin, Phoenix, as well as San Francisco. Cruise collaborates with cities and maps surface streets where it will launch ahead of time. And we're told that once that happens, the cars are tested with safety drivers until things are up and running. Over in Austin, that took about three months. Now, the company says it plans to target areas with high pedestrian traffic and active nightlife and expand from there. Now, each vehicle will be monitored 24-7 by customer service to quickly resolve any issues. Critics argue the technology isn't ready. Now, with some of the strongest opposition coming from first responders. Well, why the concern, you ask? Well, rollouts of similar services in other major cities have caused both traffic jams, y'all know we don't need more of that, and interrupted some emergency responses. For Cruise, the company works closely with regulators and local agencies, training first responders on how to report issues with fleet vehicles in order to make those interactions as smooth as possible. At least that's what they tell us. Let me know what you think about all this. Will you be down to take a ride with no one behind the wheel? Hey, talk traffic to me, folks. I want to hear from you. If you have an issue in your area on the roads, hit me up all over and we'll work to get an answer for you. Okay, you guys know we record those ahead of time, hence the hairstyle, the outfit, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but we do have an important update from California where Cruise is already up and running. Now, earlier this month, the city of San Francisco asked General Motors to take some of its robo-taxis off of the roads, requesting more testing and even regulations. Now, this comes after the state gave Cruise and Waymo the green light to expand to offer rides in the overnight hours. But then cruise vehicles caused at least two crashes and brought traffic in one neighborhood to a standstill. And I know you saw some of that in that video there. The company blamed a music festival for disrupting its vehicles <laughs> and creating a traffic jam. What y'all think about this? Mm -hmm. Well, I just think it's one of those things that it's gonna take a long time to get this uh, ironed out. I yeah. mean, and if that's even if people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I, it is interesting to see this. I mean, because there are obviously a lot of unique issues that these bring when something gets disabled on the side of the roadway worth the driver to get it fixed. Right. The, the safety numbers are, are interesting because the ones I've seen indicate they have been safer mm -hmm. than traditional drivers. They're not distracted by cell phones, et cetera. Ooh. But there's a whole host of other issues too. Mm -hmm. So this is complicated. I think Kara was right. It's just going to take time to figure out how to make it work. And, and some brave souls to hop on in the car. We'll yeah. see how and, that goes. And longer than just three months, obviously. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've been asking people, would you get in a driverless ride share? And the majority of people, 90% said wow. no. So <laughs> WFA.com slash vote now is where you can weigh in. I think we have our answer at least for now. And I know Greg ain't doing it. Mm -mm, he already said it's a no, no. Maybe he'll be one of their safety drivers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right.